What's up, my friends? I'm here to talk about something a little, a little bit rare on this channel. I have, oh my goodness, oh me, oh my, a standalone novel, novella. It's like 65,000 words. That's a novel. And uh, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little late. I went to a wedding. I dressed up as a penguin. It was a great time. So I'm sorry this video is a little late. I was hoping to get it out, but things just didn't line up. So here we are. Ghosts, November time. I think November's still a spooky ghost month. I think December's still a spooky ghost month. You got like, you got like the Christmas past spirit coming. We're sticking with a the theme, okay? Today, I'm here to talk to you about a book called This Is How You Lose the Time War by two authors, Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is a semi-epistolary tale written as letters between two opposing factions, greatest and most deadly agents, red and blue, as they fight a never-ending war through time and reality. Now, this story is first and foremost a romance, with some very crazy, wacky, zany sci-fi elements as a topping, but I'll cover that later. The writing is beautiful, and it fits the tone that this story is shooting for with these elements so perfectly. The authors were literally writing these letters to each other as the characters, with only a little bit of third-person narration in between each letter that they receive to give life to the world that these agents exist in. And the fact that there are two authors would make it seem like it's a bit difficult to maintain this consistent tone throughout the book. But these two agents coming from drastically different worlds, one of cyber terminators and machines that go burr, and the other nature-based, feet in the mud, hive mind to plant people, the distinct authorship of the letters lends itself to this as we really get strong voices from both agents and very distinct descriptions when we're in their point of view for those momentary third person perspectives. From the descriptions of how they receive and how they send each other the letters to how they accomplish the missions that they're being put on by either one's higher superiors to the words on the page clashing against each other as they first taunt but then slowly shift into love through thousands of universes one word at a time. Now the language in this book is so sharp it can move extremely quick and then skirt to a halt at a moment's notice. There's a clear show of mastery in the way this story is written. There is so much imagery and description and metaphor and such powerful strings of words that are more poetry than prose. And for a romance novel, this works extremely well here. Even the way they deliver the letters is, is so well crafted and has so much thought and tuning put into them. It's not leaving a letter in a hollowed out leg of a desk to be sent shallow spycraft boring style. This is high sci-fi poetic recovery of messages in DNA that translate to a full letter or seeds from a plant that when ingested instill you with the words as they would be on a page. Every letter more uniquely delivered than the one before and each time I'm loving the descriptions as we move between the letters they send. I kind of want to cover a warning to those that hear Time War and think it's going to be really cool and interesting in sci-fi. You might still love this story. That's why I was hooked for it initially. I didn't even realize it was a romance until I started reading it. But the science fiction is there to serve just as another tool to enforce this romance, not to explore this rich world or these political dynamics. We don't know much about the two sides of this war. We don't know how the war started. We don't even know if it's going to end at the end of this book or even why they fight at all. And for this story, that's okay. Now we have two pretty clashing ideals that the authors use to meld this story together. And because of the skill and precision of their writing, they are able to make them work really well in tandem. On one hand, you have time travel, universe travel even. They're weaving through a tapestry of timelines and universes, things can run off the tracks really easily with this much fluidity in the setting. And the scope of time travel is fairly large when you think about it. Most time travel is heavily scrutinized by readers and consumers of the media, and usually it's exploring various implicative styles of time travel, the Back to the Future kind, or the 12 Monkeys kind, or whatever this was. However, you have the other side of this story, the epistolary driver. Epistolary tales, particularly ones that are letters to each other as compared to like interviews or something like that, letters are explicitly very small scope. They zone in on two people and their romance, on their connection. You aren't meant to care about much else around them when you're reading these kinds of letter to 
to letter interactions. Just how these two converse with each other, how their word-based duels of wit play out. We don't get much insight into the world that these letters exist in, but these two aspects of extremely large, dangerous scope and very small focus scope marry together really well here. This outside world from the time travel and the, the agencies are able to create conflict that keeps this very low scope connection that we've built between these two characters, this very, this very intimate relationship that you have as a reader because of the intimate nature of love letters, it makes true conflict, true drama for the two characters that are writing these letters. And that even builds on your connection to these characters even more so. This is in that way, an us versus them kind of story. Us, the, the, the epistolary side, them, the big time travel war. Us cheering for red and blue, them, the large impending scope of science fiction pushing at the boundaries, kind of creating these obstacles and these, these forces that are keeping red and blue apart, forcing these two characters to submit to the world that they live in. And while you're reading, it's extremely immersive in that way. This is something that I feel is both an exception. Uh, this might be perhaps the purest form of something that I've said previously, where in, in like a very artsy way, let's say, I'm gonna put on my fancy art hat and be like, oh, look at you all. I am up here on my high art cloud. But this is just what I've been thinking about after I read this book. This is quite possibly the strongest argument for something that I've said in the past, that idea of when you have all of your description be very abstract, you're gonna lose the reader. They're gonna slip off into space. Specificity is going to help anchor the reader. And when when you're reading this book, you might think initially that there is no specificity. It's 100% abstract. We're not getting anything concrete or solid here. But the anchor in this book, as I've come to believe it, is the romance, the love, the connection between these two characters. And that connection is so core to human existence that we don't need specifics to only match to one experience as you might want to do in other stories. It's specific in the way that it's able to create and instill in you the emotions of love that you felt in other scenarios through this super crazy abstract world that we're reading. And that, that love doesn't have to be for a partner. It could be friends, family, anything, just those emotions of love and how you will tear things apart if they are in your way to maintain that love. And and that anchor of emotion is, is so strong and so built into people that absolutely the rest of the description in this book can be completely bonkers beautifully abstract and it still works so well. I suppose that's often why love poems can get away with describing love as the licks of a candle on on a brief winter's morning as the wind flows through. It doesn't need to be super specific with what love is because it's meant to be a tool to express in words something that humans have struggled to express forever. Every person knows how they individually experience love. And for most of us, you can't really describe that, but they can certainly feel it and they can know when it's being tapped into by words and they can see those feelings put in there through metaphor, through simile and flower descriptions found in that style of poetry. And when someone has a new way to express those emotions that you can then feel through their words, you're gonna wanna listen to it. This is all a, like a big artsy way to say that like, if, if you like poetry and are willing to exist in those emotions that uh, the abstract language can instill in you, then you're gonna enjoy this story a lot. An, an issue that I see, however, uh, with this story is that if, if you're looking for more of that specificity of being in love with their romance specifically and not just the emotions that they're tapping into. If you're not looking for that abstract idea that you can kind of put your own experience onto as you might do in a poem, the romance kind of doesn't track really. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be right up front with you. It doesn't totally make sense to me. S spoiler alert, in, in a romance novel, I guess, they start as enemies taunting each other and over the course of letters, they then profess their love to each other. But looking back, on it. I'm not sure I was able to see where this click from enemies to lovers happened. The content of the letter shifts from taunts to philosophical questions and musings to love. And the language is so beautiful 
that it's kind of able to smooth that transition incredibly well if you're willing to let it. But if that isn't something that you enjoy doing, if you don't want to just live in these words and you want to really see a blooming romance and, and enjoy that, this book's probably not going to be for you. And that's totally okay. I don't think that all books are for everyone. I do think that there is a book for everyone, but this book is like a long love poem. And if you normally like romances in books, but you don't like love poetry, then this is going to be kind of hard to latch on to because this is a nonsensical romance in that way, just as love poetry can be so nonsensical because we're all on the same page when we choose to read a love poem, right? This is a vibes book first. Let the vibes take you. Do not look too long at the specifics or you're not going to be able to connect the dots. However, there is some amazing writing in here that I believe is where you should be looking at the specifics. It's, it's where you should be putting your post reading brain. Normally, after I read a book, I like to think critically about, you know, relationships between characters and the story arcs that we get to follow. But in this book, you need to be a lot more explicit. You need to like, uh, for, for post reading in this, I thought almost exclusively about the actual words on the page and not the story it was telling. You're getting things like specific references to various pop culture things. Uh, like like uh, uh, particular quotes from a particular vice president to, in a debate from a, an election circa 1988. That was a joke that I laughed at for a bit too long. And then when I brought it up to my partner, she kind of just looked at me weird and I just had to go back to reading so it wasn't too awkward. They're, they're just such great, beautiful lines in this book. Just all I can say is focus on the beauty and, and the craft of the language and, and the care that it took to put word after word in this book in such a way that it's able to create these emotions in you. Yeah. I've had thoughts of um, potentially doing a, a more meta video about hard and soft world building in, in a similar vein as hard and soft magic, but kind of expanding it out to the way we just tell stories in general. And this would certainly be an extremely strong example of a soft story in the way that we interact with it. Perhaps I'll unpack what I'm kind of thinking about there in, a, in an extra cool bonus video sometime. If that sounds like something that you kind of want to see on this channel, I, you should definitely let me know because I'm I'm, 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 well, I love doing book reviews. I'm scrambling to find other things that I want to talk about in like the narrative space, in, in the way that we tell stories. It doesn't really matter the medium. I just, I just love the craft of telling stories. And so kind of analyzing those things might be something I want to do. And if that's something that you want to hear from me, why don't you just let me know down in those comments. Hit me with that like button if you want to. But to sum up my gushing for this book, the beauty of the writing and the sheer skill and showcase of love for the craft of words here is top notch. The vibes of this book are immaculate. I'll give it a, a smaller infinity out of a larger infinity. Have you read this book? Was it the style of book that you, you were hoping for? Was it the style of book that you enjoy? It's not something that I read quite often. Not, nothing, uh, it's really hard for me to latch on to such soft books like this. But I do love poetry and I love this style of writing when it's done really well. And to mix that with science fiction, it, it really hit a soft spot for me. Let me know down in those comments. And while you're down there, why don't you hit that like button. And if you haven't yet, why don't you hit that subscribe button? I'm waiting for it. I'm so close. I'm feeling the 500. We've hit my anniversary. I got an anniversary video coming up. That's a little late too. We, you, we've been here a year now. You, you know, I'm not the most timely person with things, but Hey, I deliver. I'm like the post office to everyone else's Amazon. Sure. They got next day shipping, but I'll get there. Okay. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get everywhere. doesn't matter if the, it's, if it's an address in the U S I'm there. Don't worry, baby. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. And until then, stay lit.